Hey folks, this is NixOS number 83, NixOS as a music production system. And for the record, any link that I talk about in this video will be available in the talkie script. A link to that talkie script will be in the description. Linux can be a pretty, pretty competent audio production system. I know Mac users will find it third class, but it works for me. But it's notoriously tricky to get set up for the first time, especially if you need extremely low latency, like near real-time monitoring through an effect stack. I will say that it's easier to get an open source Linux audio production setup using NixOS than let's say Ubuntu or Arch. I know this because I've tried it on all three. I mean, Delta the year it took me to get competent in writing Nix the language. <laughs> But even, even, even if you can't write uh, Nix yet and you're willing to cargo call stuff without understanding it or questioning it, it's pretty much falling off a log easy to make the same changes I'm gonna make to a stock Nixo system to repeat what I show here. We're gonna do the following. We're gonna set up pipe wire under NixOS such that it emulates ALSA, Pulse Audio, and Jack. We're gonna set up a low level kernel and user space configuration using a project named MuseNix. This will give us a real-time kernel. It will configure various PAM limits and UDEV rules that make the system run more predictably and with less latency under audio workloads. It will also... That's my cat. <laughs> He's going up a ladder. It will also configure global and user-specific VST and LV2 search paths. We're gonna record and play back some audio using Ardor. We're going to get some LV2 plugins installed and usable in order. We're going to record and play back some audio using Audacity. We're going to make sure that QJack Cuddle works, but we're going to install and switch to a lightweight desktop environment. Uh, I'll be using KDE at first, and then I'm going to switch to Cinnamon. Before we start, uh, apologies if you hear uh, someone using a circular saw in the background. It's been going on all day. Let's move on. Before we start, please note that if you rely heavily on software to do some crucial part of your audio work that's not open source, and that software is distributed only as a binary blob, let's say an installer for it is not yet in Nix packages. There, there are installers for binary blobs in Nix packages, but let's say yours is not. It will be more difficult to get it running on Nix OS than it would be to get it running on, say, Ubuntu. Software that falls into this category includes Harrison Mixbus. Mixbus is packaged in a proprietary distribution format. An installer hasn't been created yet for NixOS, so be it. Installers do exist for Reaper and Bitwig and other proprietary DAWs, however. There are also many libraries of open source VST LV2 plugins packaged for Nix inside of Nix packages. But if you got commercial ones that aren't, you, sh you should be able to drop them into the usual locations on the file system. They should just work, at least if they work on other Linux distros. The work I'm gonna do is gonna be done on a virtual machine. So I, I, I can't demonstrate any real-time effects monitoring as the latency caused by the virtualization makes it pointless. But on real hardware, it's, it's, it's pretty much as good as it's gonna get. Guitarx and its plugins, which require good monitoring latency are packaged for NixOS. Also for the record, we're gonna compile a, uh, a kernel during this process if your machine is in particularly high octane. If you plan on doing this more than one time or on more than one machine, you might wanna get a Cachex account and set up Cachex so that it caches the results of your builds so that it doesn't take forever on every machine. Also, also, I'm gonna use a NixOS Flake to configure our system. If you're using NixOS and you haven't yet switched over to Flakes, my apologies but you may want to check out one or both of my videos entitled NixOS 63, install NixOS 2311, use flakes out of the box, or NixOS 40, converting an existing NixOS configuration to flakes. Also, 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 I've run through the steps of this video once before on this virtual host. So if you follow along, don't be surprised if the output of, let's say NixOS rebuild is not exactly what mine is because your system will likely need to do more work than mine to get the same result due to my prior work. Also, 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 a shout out to my friend Trace by whom this video was inspired. So the VM I'm gonna to use to demonstrate this is in pretty close proximity to a stock 
host Nix installer state. It's unchanged in any meaningful way. So we're more or less starting from scratch. If yours, if you're Nix OS, if you, you know, you just installed Nix OS, uh, and you need to get to this place where I am, please refer to one of my Flakes videos that I just mentioned. We're gonna enable pipe wire such that it emulates Pulse Audio, Alsa, and Jack. Out of the box, pipe wire is the default audio system that NixOS uses. However, out of the box, it does not have Jack enabled. You have to enable it yourself. Uh, now I'm gonna get MuseNix configured in my configuration Nix. I've added a number of lines to the configuration. You can put them anywhere in here, really. There are these. Just bear with me here. Uh, MuseNix enable. It sets a bunch of sort of uh, system level stuff. Uh, it causes syscall VM swappiness to be set to 10. God, this is going to be so interesting. The next 30 seconds, you'll, you will never get this thir these 30 seconds back. It sets thread IRQs, kernel param. It sets up environment variables that help applications find VSTs and LV2s. It sets the CPU frequency governor to performance. It sets limits.conf settings for the audio group and sets up UDEV rules for the audio group. All of this will sound familiar to people who have done audio work on Linux before, but it's done in one line here, so it's useful. MuseNix kernel real-time causes a kernel to be compiled that is of the variety preempt RT, and it will be used at the next boot. To be honest, I'm not, I'm not really sure this is even really required these days to get acceptable monitoring latency, but we're doing it anyway. If it turns out to be a problem or it's unnecessary, we can always set it later to false. MuseNix RT IRQ enable sets up a configuration file named sertirq.conf and it causes a program named rtirq to be executed at boot time, which is a program for IRQ thread tuning for real time kernels. I have almost no idea what that means, but that's what that does. MuseNix sound card PCI ID causes the latency timer for the name sound card to be set. I have absolutely no idea what this means, but we can see this is the PCI ID of my audio device. Apparently it's useful. You may, you may need to do the same for your own particular sound card. I also need to make some changes to the flake.nix in here. I need to set up a new input for MuseNix, which is another flake. I need to add its MuseNix to our, the arguments of our outputs function. I need to enable the MuseNix module in my modules list. Yeah? So I'm now going to run NixOS rebuild switch. And when I'm done, I will reboot this virtual machine. If you did the same, uh, it's likely to take much, much, much longer than that just took me because uh, the results of me doing it the last time were already in the Nix store. What it did the last time was compile a real uh, a real time kernel. God, I love that circular. So I don't know if you can hear that or not, but whew. all right. So. I'm now going to reboot this system so that I can get the new kernel. Let's take a look at the result of uname-a, which should tell us what kind of kernel we're running. We are indeed running a preemptive real-time kernel. We are also running a new system D service called RTIRQ. I have almost no idea what this does, but it, it's running. Whatever it does, it's doing it. So, Ardor, Audacity, QJack Kittle. Okay, Ardor, Audacity, and QJack Kittle are now installed. Try out Ardor. 
So Ardor is giving us a warning about system has a limit for maximum amount of locked memory. This might come blah, 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 blah. The reason it's telling us this is that Chris M, the user I'm currently logged in as, is not a member of the audio group. The Musnik stuff sets up things such that anyone who is a member of the audio group will have the right PAM limits conf to manage memory. Let's rebuild switch again. Okay, I'm going to log out. Log back in so we can get the group changes. Let's try Arter again. Gotta be kidding. Okay, let's reboot the system. Made our change to my audio group. Okay, it did not give us the warning, so that PAM limit stuff did take effect after the reboot. Why I need to reboot? Okay, let's see if we can record. for recording. Let's make sure that using the right transport. Using Jack. That's fine. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Yes. back. Hello, 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 hello. It does. Okay, so uh, Arter works. Let's fire up uh, QJack Kittle. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> yep. Yep. It's working. Go and tell Arter to scan for plugins. I don't know how to get rid of these stale things. These stale ones are left over from the last time for my preparation for this video. However, let's make the stale ones not stale. We're gonna go ahead and install CAF, uh, TAP plugins, X42 plugins, and Helm to our system. Rebuild. What I had hoped to show is, is new plugins showing up after this step, but you will have seen the new plugins, although in a stale state in the last step. Whatever, you'll get it. We have those plugin packages plus their dependencies. Let's go scan. So we have a bunch of LD, LB2 plugins. I don't, do we have any BSTs? Yeah, we have one. Um, in there. I'm done with Ardor. I'm going to now try out Audacity. Audacity's finding our plugins as well. Hello. Hello. Okay, so recording in Audacity via via also works. It's good. All right, and the final thing I'm going to do is this is this is a sop really to Trace, my friend Trace, who likes uh, his audio workstation to have more lightweight desktop. <clears throat> so I'm going to switch desktop environments from KDE to Cinnamon. 
get rid of plasma. Going to enable cinnamon through these three lines. Desktop manager cinnamon enabled, desktop manager default session equals cinnamon. Display manager light DM enable, which is the login manager. Rebuild. Uh, let's fire up Audacity, see if it still works. Earth to cinnamon, okay. Yep. And Ardor works as well, I've already tried this, so it does work. I, I'm, I'm fairly skeptical of, of, of these, like, audio distributions of Linux, like MX Linux and uh, Ubuntu Studio and... That sort of stuff because, man, it's pretty easy to get this stuff set up. It's not, it ain't rocket science. And I don't think that those systems do anything more particularly special than I did here in order to get real-time monitoring prepared and to get, you know, maybe, maybe to install some other applications, but install an application is pretty easy. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.